Good evening, everyone. It's time to call to order this June 19th, 2018 meeting of the Gallatin City Council. And we're going to begin the meeting like we do at each of our meetings with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. This evening, Vice Mayor Overton is going to offer our prayer, and then our Pledge of Allegiance is going to be led by Councilman Alexander. If you'd stand with me, please. Please, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity and the freedom we have to come together to make the decision for this city. And Lord, we just ask you to give us the wisdom and and knowledge to uh, make those decisions and Lord bless this city bless the department heads and the job that they do and watch over them in this kind of extreme weather that we have in your name we pray amen, amen. please join me in the pledge of allegiance I pledge Ms. Kittrell will have the roll call now, please. Vice Mayor Overton. Present. Mr. Alexander. Present. Mr. Camp. Present. Mr. Fennell. Here. Mr. Hayes. Present. Ms. Love. Here. Mr. Mayberry is absent, but Mayor, we have a quorum. Thank you. Before you have the May 1st, 2018 minutes of the Gallatin City Council meeting. Motion approved. Have a motion by Vice Mayor Overton, a second by Councilman Alexander. Are there any additions or corrections desired by any member of this council? On page four, Mayor, there is just an error under public recognition on non-agenda related items. There's a six instead of a space. Ah, thank you. With that correction, all in favor of approving, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? They do pass unanimously. We now move on to public recognition on agenda-related items. We will have public recognition on non-agenda-related items at the end of the meeting. But right now is your opportunity to speak to anything that is on the agenda for this evening's meeting. We ask that you come forward, introduce yourself, give us your address, and then speak to the issue of your concern. Um, please limit your comments to five minutes. At this time, public recognition on agenda-related items is open. feel good today. My name is Joe DeBoard and I live at 1007 Hart Street, Gallatin, Tennessee. I rise to speak on the behalf of uh, item number three, which has to do with the stormwater utility. I am for the stormwater utility, but I am not for the way you want to handle the money. I think that anybody that ties that utility to people's uh, power bills and or uh, uh, particularly the, uh, the water bill is wrong. And I'll tell you why. We have a lot of people that come into our, our city in the, in the future is going to live in apartments. And these people do not have a chance to have the buildings and or properties uh, to satisfy the needs of storm water. Now, if you have a piece of property that you own, in, in the case of my case, I own a house. I can, I can uh, change things on the property in order to make it better for storm water. And, and I want to save the storm water. This is, goes back to the good old days when you had uh, cisterns at your home and you stored the water coming off your house. And you did that because you lived in, in areas like this that had a lot of limestone in it and you had what they call hard water out of the ground and you took the soft water that came off the building and or used that to wash clothes with back in the good old days 
And that way you didn't have a bunch of runoff. Also, you save that water to uh, water, water your uh, yards or whatever else. I think that, that it should be tied to the uh, real estate tax of the city because of the simple fact is that you can make sure that you get your money. Last week we had a uh, had Mr. Uh, Gator back there st state that uh, they lost X amount of dollars through the uh, water and sewer because people are going to go off and leave the dang bill hanging if they're moving from place to place, which that happens when you're when you're leasing property. We do not want to lose a dime. And therefore, you can go to the uh, property owner if they don't pay and can end the property and sell it, just like you would if you were picking up taxes for uh, real estate. That is the thing that we need to have. So uh, this is why I want to step to the plate on this and advise you not to do that. I understand. Hendersonville went to the, the deal with tied it, tied it to the uh, real estate taxes. And here's what I have to say about that. Anyone that serves on town council, city council, that owns property or has family that owns property and votes for it like it is right now is, not, is doing a disservice to the people that are trying to come to our city because of the simple fact is they're not going to be in, involved with paying the bill. So I thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Mr. DeBoard. Is there anyone else wishing to speak under public recognition on agenda-related items? And if you're wishing to speak, I'd ask that you come on forward so that we're ready for the next speaker when one finishes. Hello, my name is Linda Sutter. I live at 709 Coast Ferry Road. I'm here to talk about the Langley Hall property and the request to have that rezoned. We've, we've been to more than one meeting. I'm sure my face must look at least a little familiar. We've talked about noise, drainage, the road, schools, the issue of putting families right next to a steel mill. I don't think anybody disputes all this information or argues with it. One person's property rights trumps and causes all these issues. One person's property rights or desire to have their property rights changed or altered means we change the community character map that has already, already been carefully discussed, reviewed, implemented. One person can override what the Planning Commission has already said was not a good idea. I just uh, would like to point that out, that one person's property rights can affect all of us in that area. And to say that all those other issues, the noise, the drainage, the schools, the road, <clears throat> that's not just the city's problem. It becomes the county's problem. Well, that's us too. So, just pointing that out. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sutter. Anyone else wishing to speak this evening under public recognition? Good evening. My name is Brad Langford. Uh, I'm representing my parents, Jack and Ima Langford. They live at 255 Old Douglas Lane. I also lived at 245 Old Douglas Lane until about 10 years ago. So to say I know the area, uh, grew up on it, my family's owned it since 1945. Um, we entered into a contract with Goodall Contractors. Uh, it's been over a year now, and we have been more than pleased with the way Goodall has have worked with us, has communicated, has told us how these meetings would go, um, they have met with the, the people in the, the general area to kind of help give them an idea of what the, the total plan is. And, and they didn't enter into it without knowledge. They knew about the gas line. They knew about where water would go. They knew the street was the, the width of the street. They, they knew all of these things, and, and we have been open and honest and communicated the whole time. Uh, we're delighted that they are, are going to name it Langford Farms. It honors my parents. It honors my family. My grandfather and grandmother were on that land, and, and it's so very special to us. Um, 
we, we thank you for your consideration and the, the vote that you're going to do tonight. Thank you, Mr. Langford. Anyone else wishing to speak this evening? I see no one indicating that they wish to speak, so I'll declare public recognition on agenda-related items closed. Taking us down to Mayor's comments, I do want to remind everyone of just a few upcoming events. The first third Thursday on Main will be this Thursday night. Starts at 6.30, goes until about 9, and this week the parks are playing. So they're a local favorite. I'd encourage everyone to be there and enjoy the special event. This Saturday, the classic car cruise-in happens again in the City Hall parking lot. That's from 4 until 8 p.m. Um, next Thursday, as I've mentioned before, each Thursday the square is trying to have some kind of special event. So the following Thursday, after third Thursday on Main, is going to be a Thursday on the square event featuring an antique walk. So that happens from 5 till 8 p.m. on that day. And then I just wanted to remind everyone that on the 3rd of July, there is, um, we've decided to can cancel that city council meeting. So I just wanted to remind um, the council and the public of that. At this time, I'm going to ask um, the representatives from the Alzheimer's Association to join me at the podium because we do have a special proclamation for them. I'd like to introduce to you all April Barker and Mary Jacqueline Williams. Can you tell they're sisters? <laughs> they are representing the Alzheimer's Association this evening, but they also work for Brookdale Senior Living. So we welcome them here this evening and, and really appreciate their passionate work um, for those suffering from Alzheimer's, but also the, I know they're both in elder care and are very <laughs> passionate and caring about it. So I'm going to read this proclamation. It says, whereas Alzheimer's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative brain disorder that tragically robs individuals of their memories and leads to progressive mental and physical impairments, and whereas there are no known treatments to prevent, cure, or even delay the onset or slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease, and whereas Alzheimer's disease affects more than 5.7 million Americans of all ages and is the sixth leading cause of death in Tennessee and the fifth leading cause of death among the elderly in the United States, and whereas in Tennessee alone, more than 435,000 family members, friends, and caregivers provided 495 million hours of unpaid care for loved ones with Alzheimer's and spent $279 million on higher health care costs, and whereas the City of Gallatin recognizes the efforts of the Alzheimer's Association to highlight early detection and diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease and other dementias, the education, support, and research, thereby improving the financial, physical, and emotional health of those living with Alzheimer's disease and their caregivers, and whereas the month of June 2018 has been declared Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month to help spread global awareness of the Alzheimer's Association's vision of imagining a world without Alzheimer's disease and to recognize the individuals, families, and friends and caregivers dealing with this disease and the researchers who are committed to seeking a cure. Now, therefore, I, Paige Brown, Mayor of the City of Gallatin, do hereby proclaim June 2018 as Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month and urge all residents to wear purple to help spread global awareness of the Alzheimer's Association vision of imagining a world without Alzheimer's disease. So. With that, I'm going to present this to you all. Did you want to say anything? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get him to take a picture with us. Thank you. Can we I'll get on either there. side? I'll get oh. you in the middle. She's oh, the bossy one. Oh, oh, it's symmetrical. Oh, yeah, and that's yeah. Yeah. Thank Hey, you. Jeff, Thank you. would you take a close-up of that before you give it to them and then send me both of those pictures where you can actually read the words? <laughs> Thank Yay. you, ladies. Thank, thank you, you so much. You. Thank you all. And appreciate you. Seriously appreciate the commitment to learning more about the disease and contributing to help find a cure for it and supporting those who are dealing with it and their families. So thank you all. And now we'll move on to the regular agenda. And the first item on the agenda is second reading on Ordinance 01805-29, and for that, Councilman Alexander is recognized. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, this is an order of the City of Galveston, Sumner County, Tennessee, rezoning a 6.807 acre parcel from the PGC Plan General Commercial District to the R6 High Density Residential District in approving a preliminary master development plan for blessing the state, authorizing the revision to be indicated on the official zoning atlas repealing uh, conflicting ordinance, providing for serviceability and providing for an effective date. And I so move. Well, 
Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Alexander, a second by Councilman Fennell, and that opens the floor for discussion. Yes, I had uh, one of my constituent, constituent I'm sorry, uh, he's out of town tonight, and he was very concerned about uh, this uh, development. He wanted to know exactly what the apartment's going to look like and who's going to be, you know, living in the apartment. So when he come back in town, I told him I would show him some pictures of the development, what it's going to look like, but as far as who's going to move in, I have no okay. idea. There are no apartments. Uh, single family housing. Single family houses. I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> single family houses. Mm -hmm. So I told him I have no idea who's going to be living in them, but the uh, price is going to be pretty steep, so it won't be just any. I'd say everybody. whoever buys them. <laughs> yeah, be pretty nice looking. Yeah, they are. They are. But uh, he wasn't against it, but he, that's what he was concerned about, and I just want to voice his opinion because he's out of town right now, and he's not here to say anything. Anything else you want to add? Yeah. Any other discussion? Say so seeing none, this is second reading on ordinance 01805-29. Will all in favor indicate by saying aye. Uh -huh. Opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Item number two is second reading on amended ordinance 01806-30. And I'm gonna ask Councilman Pinnell to take this one, please. Thank you, Mayor. This is an ordinance appropriating $329,894.14 for 2008 year-end budget adjustments. And at this time, I would like to make an amendment to amend this ordinance right here, uh, amend it to from 329,894.14 to $370,294.14, and I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second on the amendment. Any discussion on that? You have the, um, the amended as presented on your desk. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment? Okay, all in favor of the amendment, please say aye. aye. Opposed, say no. It does pass unanimously, which takes us to the regular motion, to the original motion, which you technically only made a motion on the amendment. <laughs> so, do you want to make a motion on the original, a motion on the second the reading? Original. The original? Yeah. yeah. So ordinance appropriating three hundred twenty nine thousand eight hundred ninety four dollars and fourteen cents for well as am, as amended you've already as amended, amended it so you can just for two thousand eighteen year end budget adjustments I so move okay motion by Fennell second by Hayes any discussion on that all right this is second reading on amended ordinance zero one eight zero six thirty all in favor say aye aye opposed please say no it does pass unanimously. Item number three is second reading on ordinance 01806-31, Councilwoman Love. Thank you, Mayor. This is an ordinance to amend the city of Gallatin, Tennessee Municipal Code Chapter 18 stormwater to establish a, unit, a utility for stormwater management to establish the function of the utility to create a special revenue fund and method for, of funding for the utility and to fix the effective date of this ordinance. I so move. Can we have a motion by Councilwoman Love, a second by Councilman Alexander. Is there any discussion on this? Okay, seeing no discussion, we will proceed with second reading on Ordinance 01806-31. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Item four is first reading on Ordinance 01711-95, and Councilman Camp is recognized. Thank you, Mayor. This is an ordinance of City of Gallatin, Sumner County, Tennessee. There's only two parcels told in the pocket, 77.43 acres plus or minus from the IR Industrial Restrictive, IG Industrial General, R15 Medium Density Residential and R20 Low Density Residential District to 15 R15 Medium Density Residential Plan, Residential Development, R15 PRD, District and approving the preliminary master development for the Langley Estates located east and north of Coles Ferry Road, authorizing the vision to be indicated on the official zoning atlas, repealing the conflicting orders as provided for servability and provided for effective date. So moved. We have a motion by Councilman Camp, a second by Councilman Alexander, opening the floor for discussion. Councilwoman Love, you recognize. Was there uh, the meeting with Hagenies that we postponed it for before? Yeah, there has been no meeting. Um, there's been indication that they do not wish to meet. So that's oh. where we are. Mm -hmm. I do, Mr. McCord, do you want to guide us on this a little bit? Because, um, you know, it was brought up at the Planning Commission 
last week that there is a, a changed plan that the uh, yes, this item, Bill McCord, City Planner, this item has been kicking around for quite a while now and it's been deferred a few times and uh, changes have been made kind of mainstream and some of the items have maybe come out of order in the traditional sense. But uh, last meeting that we had with the Planning Commission, uh, the applicant did approach the Planning Commission and uh, informally, I would say, offered a modification to the master development plan that you have uh, seen already and I don't have a lot of details on that plan but generally what it would do is take that proportion of the property that's closest to the Hagany site about uh, I'm guessing about 300 feet from the Hagany East West property boundary and reserving that under the existing zoning and using that as a buffer between their proposed development. So the big change would mean that they would reduce the number of lots, they would retain a buffer that would keep the industrial zoning on the easterly, north let's call it the north and easterly portion of their property, and, but they would still move forward with developing the rest of the property, including the northwest portion and, of course, the southerly portion that is subject to annexation as well. Now, um, the applicant hasn't presented that in a formal setting either to the Planning Commission or to certainly City Council, but that is something that has been discussed. And uh, what it would still involve is rezoning some of the property to uh, that's zoned industrial now to a residential designation. It would just change the master development plan. So we, are we voting on what's here in this motion or are we voting on something that's coming up you're Maybe voting in on what's in your agenda package on the original plan that shows the properties uh, being developed closer to the Hagen East. Can the, representative, lots. can the representative discuss the proposed plan and then them consider amending it? I don't know if it, what y'all what might want to consider since the applicant does have an alternative plan that you haven't seen yet is that you might want to have this item come up at the council committee meeting, the next council committee meeting where it can be presented to you and you can discuss it in detail mm -hmm. at that time. That's what I would suggest well, you do. I mean, I think we're all kind of feeling a little bit bad about, you know, people continually having to come to these meetings because no decision has been made on it. What, 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 what's the council thinking you guys want to do? Do you I mean, want to hear? It, none, we haven't seen it yet. I mean, that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, a few of y'all had from Planning Commission, but I mean, none of us have seen it yet. So I think what Bill's, it's a good idea to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a big deal going to 380 foot. Huh? I mean, this is just first reading. It's mm -hmm. still going to go through a second reading, mm -hmm. but we've got a committee meeting coming up too, and then you know it'll be another two or three weeks before do the second you, reading. So, do you want to hear from the representative or no? I mean, we can, but I'm I just mean, saying it'd I'm be better. It would be better at the committee meeting that way. We so can go look ahead and at it vote on it on first reading. If that's what I mean, is, is that what y'all want to do? I'm looking for feedback from. And that way, we'd have more information in the next meeting. Yeah. Well, right now, Bill said it would be voting. On what's here. On what's here. But well, it'd be amended much like you would amend everything. And, yeah, and, and, amended. and I mean, in theory, hard. you you know, if you know, if changes weren't made to your you wouldn't support it on second reading. Right. I mean we don't do it that much anymore, but we have done that a lot in the past, I think. So do we need to at least pull Andy up, Mr. That's Leaf? It's up to you all. No, I don't think so. You don't? Let's just move on with it. Do you want to move on to a vote on first reading? Because we'll definitely have more information for the next uh, meeting. So we will vote on first reading. Depending on that vote, we will decide on how, it, whether or not it goes on council committee meeting. Okay. First reading on ordinance 17111 95. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? does pass unanimously on first reading and I'm assuming this council is then requesting that it go on to next week's right. council work session to see an amended plan. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm making notes. Next item is item number six, resolution R1801-1, Councilman Alexander. 
Thank you, Mayor. This is a resolution of the City of Galveston, Summit County, Tennessee, adopting a plan of service upon the annexation of a partial tax map 104, partial 093.00, uh, consisting of 80.243 80 acres located west of Old Douglas uh, Lane, east of Highway 109, and north of Hidden Trail, which is a private drive, and providing for an effective date. And I so move. Okay, a motion by Councilman Alexander, a second by Councilman Camp. And that opens the floor for discussion. And you may want some guidance again from Mr. McCord because it's been a while since we have discussed this. Um, for your information, the interlocal agreement last night did go to the county commission and I understand that it passed unanimously with no discussion. So that's the status on that. Any questions, any discussion? Okay, this will be resolution R1801-1. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. No. Okay, it passes five to one with Ms. Brad Ms. Bradley Love voting no. Item number seven is resolution R1801-2. Councilman Alexander. Thank you, Mayor. This is a resolution of the City of Galveston, Sumner County, Tennessee, and annexing a 80.243 acre partial, tax map 104 partial, uh, 093.00 located west of Old Douglas Lane, east of Highway 109 and north of Hidden Trail, uh, which is a private road into the city of Gallatin, authorizing a uh, annex partial to be indicated on the official zoning atlas, authorizing the assignment uh, of annex area to be council district, repealing conflict ordinance, providing for servability and providing for an effective date. And I so move. Okay. Motion by Councilman Alexander. Second, Second by um, Councilman Camp. Is there any discussion on this? Seeing no one indicating they wish to discuss, this is resolution R1801-2. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. no. Again, it passes five to one. Councilwoman Love has voted no. And item number eight is second reading on ordinance 01801-1. Councilman Alexander, it's you again. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is order of the city of Gallatin, Sumner County, Tennessee, rezoning an 80.243 acre partial tax map 104, partial 093.00 from the agricultural residential district to the MR uh, multiple residential and office district in approving a preliminary mass de development plan uh, for the land for Lamford Farm, authorizing the revision to be indicated on the official zoning atlas, repealing conflict ordinance, providing for servability and providing for an effective date. And I so move. Second. Motion by Councilman Alexander, second by Vice Mayor Overton. Again, the floor is open for discussion. It's the last item on Langford Farms. I just wanted to say again that after seeing those pictures of the flooding and knowing that road myself, Knowing the bridge and how small of a road that is, I just I feel like that's too many houses to be added over that way. Anyone else wishing to comment? Okay, this is second reading on Ordinance 01801-1. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, say no. no. And Councilwoman Love voted against. The other five in favor. Item 9 is Resolution R1806-41, Vice Mayor Overton. Yes, ma'am. This is a resolution to revise employee play plans for the 1% uh, pay raise. So that, I so much. That's hard to say, isn't it? It employee, is. Employee. It's hard. Pay it's plans. so You try and say it. It's so hard employee to say. Employee pay plans. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Overton. Second by Councilman Alexander. Is there any discussion? Okay, this is resolution R1806-41. All in favor say aye. Uh, Opposed say no. Yes, we need pay uh, plan. We need um, <laughs> clarification. It is for the pay plan. <laughs> um, and it passed unanimously. Item 10 is resolution R1806-42. Councilman Fennell. Thank you, Mayor. This is a resolution amending Galton personnel rules and regulations relating to training personal protective equipment and certification and license reimbursement. I so move. Second. Motion by Councilman Fennell, second by Vice Mayor Overton and for um, the general public's information, this is where in public safety where we you know, train or spend money on uh, an employee either to 
increase their responsibilities or to onboard them and then they leave within a, a short period of time, we ask for reimbursement on that. And it's changing the time that we're giving those people to actually reimburse the city for the money that we've spent on training and equipping them. So, any further discussion on this resolution? Okay, it's resolution R18. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask. I know that Eddie asked for a list of all of those, and I, th I, ha I thought that we were all going to get a list of. I do have. Is it? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I, I, that's all right. You can would email you, it. I just would you, kind of thought it was for all of us. Debbie Johnson, Human Resources. Would you mind uh, distributing it via email tomorrow? Yes, I'll be glad okay. to. Thank you. Anything else? We did get Chief Bandy's. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, this is Resolution R1806-42. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, say no does pass unanimously. Item number 11, resolution R1806-43 and Vice Mayor Overton. Thank you, Mayor. This is resolution adopting a strategic plan for the city of Gallatin that we've been working on for a long time and I so move. I appreciate that. You seem to say that with pleasure, Vice Mayor Overton, who made the motion, seconded by Councilwoman Love, also seemed to be with pleasure. Um, I do think this is a very exciting opportunity for our city for this council's information. This has been on the website for the public's review to let them know that we are voting on it tonight. Um, just to let them know it's out there. And Mayor, I just want to say I hope everybody will get involved and, and you know, make this thing what it what it's meant to be. Um, yeah. it, it's going to take everybody. One or two people can't do it. So I just hope everybody will get involved. Yeah, And it's challenging. I mean, I'm, I'm really, really excited about year one, year two. I'm a little intimidated by. <laughs> but I think it will um, challenge us all to do better. So it's a very exciting time, I think. Any other discussion? Questions? I like wanting drums or something to vote on this. But um, this is resolution R1806-43. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. I want to say a huge thanks to the Greater Nashville Regional Council, Michael Skipper and Kim Maltempo. They've been our, um, our guides and our champions and our cheerleaders through all of this. And we're very appreciative of the work that we've done, they've done on our behalf. And I think we're all looking forward to moving on to updating our land use plan. And certainly in that, we're going to need the public's engagement too. And you can go to California now and run 100 miles tomorrow. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I am very grateful for the help and, and, and certainly the help of um, the stakeholders who participate in those meetings and most importantly, our council and our department heads because our department heads engaged and, and worked hard and this council did too. And I know it's been painful at times and difficult and it's taken a lot of time. Some of you, it's taken time away from your work, but I hope you know, in, in year, years from now, we'll be able to look back and say, man, that was so worth it. It really made a difference in how we ran our city. And it's and the city's better because of it. So thank you all. And I'll quit talking about the strategic plan for a few minutes. That actually does conclude our regular agenda. And it brings us now to other business. And I know that Ms. Kittrell has an item for us. Yes, Mayor. I have a certificate of compliance. This is for the Copper Steel Wine and Spirits located at... Uh, 1176 Long Hollow Pike. Everything is in order. They just have to do this every two years. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Vice Mayor Overton. A second by Councilwoman Love. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, say no. It passes unanimously. Thank you. Any other items? Of, uh, any other other? Any other items of <laughs> any other items of business from this council? That's what I'm trying to say. I just want to. I'm reminding everybody uh, who would be available this coming Sunday. I'll be celebrating my 50th anniversary in Northernville. And we'll be carrying two buses from uh, St. Luke Church uh, going that way. So if anybody would like to ride down, we'll be glad to have you. Well, congratulations, Councilman Alexander, Brother Alexander. Pa was, was, what did they call you, church pastor, brother? I've been called a lot of things <laughs> in 20 years. So, so we can't talk about that. Right. Well, what, what's your favorite? When it comes pastor. to preaching, Pastor. I don't well, give reverence to, no, to nobody according to the Bible. Congratulations, Pastor Thank Alexander. You. We appreciate your service in that capacity as well. And now I do have one other item. This is on your desk. This is the um, notice of intent to execute the professional services contract with Reagan Smith for the various sidewalks project. And so 
with your vote and permission, we will do that. Without it, we won't. No. Yeah. You need a motion. Don't we vote on no. this? You sure? No objection. It's fine, right? No, without objection. No objection. All right, we will do that. Any other other business this evening? We will move along to public recognition on non-agenda related items. At this time, if you have something that's not on the agenda but it's on your mind, it's your opportunity to come forward and talk about it. Again, introduce yourself and give us your address. Oh, he's going to take a second opportunity. I gotta get up here, Miss. Uh, my sweetheart, she's too short. Uh, I'm Joe Board, and I live at 1007 Hart Street. And the reason why I come to this uh, podium the second time tonight is because I want to get the feel of what's going on with the, the council with regard to a uh, endowment for the cemetery. Do you have an endowment for the cemetery, Mayor? No, sir. Why don't you have one? You have to have money to have an endowment. Okay, well, if somebody wanted to give you some, would you set up an endowment? Uh, well, I mean, it takes some sizable amount of funds to be able to do that. But it makes no, never mind, $5 or $10, you still have it in the kitty. Well, but we're, we're kind of using that money to address immediate concerns. I understand we are, about what We you are mean. taking donations to support the cemetery, and we will continue to do so. Right. Well. But, uh, right. I look forward to uh, next uh, meeting like this to make a donation for the endowment of the cemetery. Will you accept that endowment? <laughs> okay. We will accept the donation. Okay. I mean, well, I, that, we're going to tie it up because what we're going to do is we're going to use the interest off that to help maintain the cemetery. And then that starts in the perpetual motion to where other people can give, give in lieu of flowers or whatever so that we'll have something there to take care of the cemetery with. Now, would that work? <laughs> I have to find out about the city being able to set up an endowment. Well, they can handle it. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. All right. We'll see it. We'll see in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak under public recognition on non-agenda related items? Seeing no one, that brings us to the opportunity to say adieu. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Vice Mayor Overton, second by Councilman Alexander. All in favor say aye. aye. Everyone have a lovely evening. Thank you for being here. We look forward to seeing you again next time.